please don't. <laughs> Welcome to Community Viewpoint. Jeff, what is that? It says Maria and John. It's supposed to be John and Maria. We've got to fix that next week. Ladies well, first, John. Yeah, welcome to Community Viewpoint. Uh, today is June 6th. I'm John Pollock, your host, and Maria Which Hurst. Camera are we at? There's the host before me on the, on the lead in there. And as <laughs> promised, uh, we have M.L. Robinson with us, Professor Robinson from the Cooperative Extension uh, out of Las Vegas. And you do your regular trips into Las in uh, Pahrump to uh, teach us about the different types of creepy crawly things, about uh, palm trees. Mm -hmm. About just a little bit of everything. Just a little, about a little bit of everything. And what are we going to do tonight? What are well, we going to be talking about? We're going to talk about uh, some of the poisonous creatures that we have in our desert. There are a few that are. <laughs> and I brought some facsimiles of some and some live ones. Uh, they don't like me bringing live rattlesnakes in, so <laughs> darn. I'm so glad. <laughs> And uh, I forgot my Gila monster, but we don't see Gila monsters too often in no. southern Nevada. But they are here. What are those other little uh, critters? Geckos. Geckos? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes people think that they have baby. Do I need to move over? Well, I, I, <laughs> I'm just so close to this thing here. Oh, she's afraid of my uh, guy here. But um, we do have Gila monsters, and uh, but... They spend 98% of their time underground anyway, and so you, even if you happen to be in an area, in a park or whatever, that have Gila monsters, you're probably not going to see them in the wild. If you do, consider yourself lucky. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do we have here? Out in front, uh, we have the snake pit. <laughs> yes, uh, we have a speckled rattlesnake here, and this is actually a facsimile that was, the mold was made from a real snake, and then uh, my daughter's an art student, so she's been painting these for me, and then I mount them on natural looking um, rock formations that I make. And so we use them in our classes. <clears throat> this is a, an average size of the speckle. Uh, if you look at the rattlesnake up close, you can see his head is more triangular, and that's typical of most venomous snakes, or at least of the rattlesnakes. And the one in the center is the little uh, sidewinder, and that's just the kid's toy. But it gives us an idea. I haven't gotten my facsimile painted yet. But the Sidewinder does do this S pattern as it uh, Do you want me to zoom in on these? Do you want me to zoom in on them? I think it'd be easier because okay. the mic is in the way. No, no, no I know. Um, <laughs> oh, there we go. Well, but, there we go. We could do that. Let, let that, one, that camera is set up already. Okay. okay. And if we can. The other way. The other way. OK. You want to hold one? the scorpion? No. You hold oh, it. Okay. I do not want to hold this scorpion. Okay. There you go. <laughs> now we have it. We'll, we'll get this down right. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, that's They have the horns. Sidewinder. The Sidewinder okay. has horns. Uh, they're a smaller snake. Uh, they will bury themselves in the sand. And there is a viper from uh, Africa and the Sahara that it resembles this. Uh, the same pattern. It's, it's a co-evolutionary -ev thing, except it doesn't have the rattlers. And um, all rattlesnakes, except for one, have rattles. Hmm. And they're all found in, in North, Central, and South America. And uh, it's the only place that a snake with a rattle is found. On Catalina Island, they do have rattlesnakes without rattles because they've evolved not needing them on that island. Oh, interesting. Now, here's another rattler here we have. Right. right and th this is your typical size rattler. It reminds you of a diamondback. Uh, it's kind of a quasi one that I picked up at a zoo, but it's easy to carry around. And they can get quite large. Our, our most aggressive, most snakes, including rattlesnakes, are not very aggressive if you leave them alone and don't corner them. The Mojave can be kind of, the green Mojave, which can have a tinge mm -hmm. uh, of, of that uh, green to it, uh, can be aggressive. And they're ones that you want to leave alone. And they're ones to remember uh, when you're out looking for hunting scorpions, that scorpions uh, glow in the dark, which mm -hmm. I'll show you, uh, but uh, Mojave Greens don't, or any of the other rattlesnakes. So if you're hunting scorpions, which is kind of fun, uh, we do that with the kids in Las Vegas in our junior uh, herp club, and that's as in herpetology, not in herpes. Turtle. <laughs> turtle Turtles herps. and reptiles. But um, if you'll hold... Yeah, if you'll hold this, this is a black light. I bought it at Lowe's, but you can get them at Home Depot. And if we can, I guess, to go down here to this camera again. Was it this one here? Yeah, there you go. 
And if you'll shine that right oh, look on. Look at them go. Look, look at them, them glow. I'm going to keep an eye on them because I was showing it for a guy taking pictures today and they were crawling on my hands. This is the most poisonous uh, scorpion that we have in uh, Nevada. Oh, there they're, he goes. He wants to leave. They're small. They can be aggressive. And they can really hurt. I don't know if we can... Here, will you hold this one? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. There you go. There you go. Yeah, look at that sucker. And they hurt. I've been stung by them. Uh, unfortunately, I got stung four times on my middle finger, so I was very careful driving because it, it swelled up so large that I couldn't bend it. It oh, just stuck okay. up. And it almost split the skin. Wow. And I'm not very uh, allergic to venom. Now, if you were a, a small child or an, uh, very elderly, would you, that would be more serious? Yes, our immune system immune. problems. Uh, and this is how you catch them. Just grab them with large pinchers. Uh, the, these uh, guys, are sh you can get these at the reptile uh, shops for feeding mice and other things to reptiles. What, the same ones? No, the... Uh, oh, those, not the, the, the uh, yeah, okay. What are they? The tweezers. Like tweezers, yeah, yeah, I just went blank on I actually have some that are like two feet long, but... You just uh, go out at night. Now, if you have, if you think you have scorpions in your yard, you go out at night with a black light and look around. The problem that, and this will be kind of sobering, for every one scorpion you find in your backyard, you probably have about six to eight behind them, behind them hiding because they don't all come out at night. Oh, just like in the movies, they. Yeah, you know, the big ones in the movies that are about 10 feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, these are predators. They eat each other as well as, let me put these back here. <laughs> don't play with them. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. This is the, <laughs> that, uh, the bark scorpion is the only one that does um, climb. Now, if you want to take this again, this is my male. Wow. Uh, that thing is Desert, huge. Desert, uh, hairy scorpion. He doesn't like me holding him like that, but he can sting. But see, he has bigger pinchers. He's a bigger scorpion, and so he's not as venomous. Okay, what's going to pinch me, though, in the back, right? Uh, this is what's going to sting. You see how he's right trying there. to sting? Right, right, right. Right there. Yeah. That's the stinger right there by my finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there he goes. And these are his friends, the cock little roaches, and they're the little crickets. 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 And oh, 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 yeah. See, oh. he just grabbed it. Uh, th he's, he they're mad they're at not. Him. They're not his friends. They're his dinner. Okay. <laughs> That's for a different show, folks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, if if somebody comes and says they're going to spray for um, scorpions in your house, it's really hard to spray and take care of scorpions. Uh, you can use diatomaceous earth or DE, which is a common. Uh, bio uh, pesticide. Uh, what we recommend is you do uh, DE, uh, go to your green section of your Home Depot or Lowe's or specialty shop, and then go to like Michael's or somewhere where they dry flowers and get silicon gel, uh, which is the same as dry own. Mix them together and then you sprinkle it along the edge of your walls because that's where insects are going to crawl. Mm -hmm. the other Inside th or outside? You could do both. As long okay. as it will last quite a while if, uh, if you don't bring it, uh, you know, water it or it rains. And Can I ask a question? You bet. Is, is that silicone gel something that somebody could get locally? Yes. Or could they, okay. They could, or they can order it online order as online. either silicone gel or dry own. Uh, and then they can order... Uh, diatomaceous earth. Now, I'm glad you asked that question because there is diatomaceous earth that they use in pool filters and mm -hmm. that has, that's not any good for insect control. You have to have the diatomaceous earth which is a, uh, a grade that's for agriculture. Okay. And we do make that in the state of Nevada. It's mine. Right. It's the little tiny skeletons of diones that lived millions of years mm -hmm. ago. And oh, then... Wow. The, can, can I ask one more question? Um, you can ask as many as you like. <laughs> I, I know, I'm supposed roll. to be interviewing yeah, I here. know. <laughs> I'm taking over. <laughs> That's okay. You have good information. Now, if you sprinkle it inside, is if somebody's worried about their carpet or their, their wood flooring, is that going to 
harm that or stain right. it. Or and that's very, and not only that, how about small pets and children? And right. that's why we recommend uh, using these products because you can get it between the carpet and the wall and you kind of dust it down in and then you don't okay. see it. You can sprinkle it behind. It's not like using boric acid, which is a poison. You don't want kids or pets to, mm -hmm. to ingest that. Um, diatomaceous earth is fine. Uh, you add the silicon gel uh, for scorpions. If you don't have scorpions, just use the diatomaceous earth because it works on the other insects fairly like well. Like spiders and yeah. crickets or, well. A any, any, crickets, anything but. with an exoskeleton that uh, can be, uh, it, it just, it's kind of sad from my perspective. It, it um, rubs against their exoskeleton and, and cuts it and, and makes them uh, dry out and they just dehydrate and die a painful death. <laughs> so they should migrate over to the cooperative extension, extension so yeah. they can be saved. And the other thing we <laughs> recommend... if they go to your house, we're going to put diatomaceous earth, earth around. around. <laughs> and then the other thing is both outside and inside your doorways, your main passageways, mm -hmm. uh, put sticky traps. And this is a sticky trap, and you just pull this off. You make your little pup tent. It's kind of like the Roach Motel, they check into their little camping tent and they never mm -hmm. check out. And okay. um, it's sticky when you pull that off. And in this case, uh, this is a roach trap. It's a line uh, that commercial people use called low line. And you put a tablet in if you have roach problems. These just fill up with roaches. Now one of the reasons you may have uh, um, scorpions in your yard is because you have a lot of roaches and crickets. And, and it's Eating they're, grounds. Yeah, they're just okay. eating. So, and and then if you have cement walls, <laughs> cement walls are great places for them to hide in the crevices, and uh, they can hide in the rocks and whatnot. It's hard to have a sterile world. We shouldn't live in a sterile world. So, where would you buy these at Home Depot? You or? can buy regular, uh, not this brand, but you can buy sticky traps at Home Depot and Lowe's and, and any of the. Uh, places uh, and they that just care. stick there, and then you just take a hammer and just kind of squish no, them. No, uh, when this fills up, <laughs> and, I'm just like, get them, get rid of them. If you have a lot of roaches, uh, this will fill up in a night. And you just put a food tablet that comes with it in the center, and then they crawl in and they stick to it. And then you look inside and say, yep, it's full, and you drop it in a, in the trash and send it off because they'll die there. Now, what happens is crickets and ants will come in here also. And, uh, and then the scorpions will say, oh, buffet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they, they'll come in. Uh, the only problem you, have to ha you ha might have is that um, sometimes lizards get stuck on here. Aww. And so if you get a lizard or a small snake that you want to save, what you do is you uh, take some vegetable oil and pour it on and gently move uh, the lizard off. And, and when I have baby snakes hatching at my house, and sometimes they get out, I put these along the wall at night, and then they get on here, and then I, I just remove them. I just remove them, and it doesn't hurt them. Now you'd put these in your doorway. Well, you know, on the say this is your door right here. Okay. I'd put them on the outside by the door next outside to the wall. Outside the house. Outside and inside, so you catch them trying to come in, and once they get in, because okay. uh, rodents and snakes and uh, insects like the security of going along the wall. Okay. And so you can actually catch mice without any food by just putting a trap next to a wall because that's where they're going to grow. Okay. So at, at night when you're asleep or when you're laying in bed with the lights off, do you hear a little pitter-patter around your house? or you From know? the snakes? Yeah, or from the things that are crawling in and out of here. Well, your... hopefully not. <laughs> I remember as a kid living in Florida and... Um, oh, that would be very, yeah. Yeah, my, my cousin and I would stay at this aunt's house, and it was an old Florida house up off the ground mm -hmm. with big cracks and things. Uh, that, and you could actually walk into the kitchen, and there were big roaches. They were like three or inches long, oh, two to three wow. inches. And you could flip mm -hmm. on the light switch in the kitchen and hear them running in the cupboards <laughs> trying to get away from you. That was kind of oh. creepy oh, even so for me. Funny. I remember that in Vietnam. Yeah. I had a, a desk drawer. They get up in the middle of the night and you open a drawer and everything, everybody runs through your back. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's a good climate for them. But sticky <laughs> traps, diatomaceous earth, uh, you really can't spray everywhere. It's with them. Uh, if you go to the uh, big box stores, they'll, they'll sell you these and then they have this you know those grabbers to grab things 
off the shelf, and they have one now that has a sticky trap that you oh, close cool. around each of the scorpions, which is a good uh, continuing sales item. And then they have uh, spray to spray each one, and you can do that, or you can step on them as long as you have shoes on. Mm -hmm. You wear shoes, and and if you think you have scorpions, or a big mallet like on yeah. the cartoons. <laughs> and if you think you have scorpions, <laughs> if you think you have scorpions, you know, go out and look but also be careful one of the first things we learned when i was growing up as a kid dump your shoes don't put your shoes on without mm -hmm. pounding them and, and dumping them out look in mailboxes because um these guys will climb uh the bark scorpions um and just be cautious you don't have to be paranoid but be cautious you know what i did last week a couple times in fact i think last night i had my window open a little bit but i left my window open in my car overnight just a, just a little bit and I thought, oh no, what if something crawls in here? So um, is that a good idea just to make sure they're all closed? Yeah, close up your cars. Uh, you never know what's going to get. they could go in there, right? Yeah, anything okay. can go well, in. I usually have the window open on either side, so if it crawls in once, it's I like, go out. Yeah. <laughs> but it may not Nothing's go out. Nothing's ever in my car. It may go out, may stay. Okay. Well, and okay. you're more okay. apt to get. I'm going to lean back for this one, too. Okay. This is a nice little girl. This is one of the um, our native spiders. This is our largest uh, and only tarantula that's native. Um, and she is, let's see, she's very nice. She's brown, the brown tarantula. Let's if you see find if you any put her on white paper. What's her name? Oh, I haven't named her. I don't name these guys. They're just specimens for my class. Oops, I just barely have it on there. Let's see if we can get her up in the air. Yeah. You have to watch her because she'll... Oh, well, look at the fur on that side. Yeah, and you have to be careful. Uh, this is very irritating, and I made the mistake oh, of, the... in doing an interview earlier. <clears throat> and uh, when, when you first... If you disturb, come up behind and disturb them for the first time. You touch them on the back, they'll take their hind legs and, and try to shove these hairs onto your, right. into your face if you're an animal. And uh, actually, my eye is very red because I made the mistake of Rubbing. not thinking I rubbed some of the hairs up into my eye. And it's very irritating and pain fairly painful, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not as painful as the scorpion butt uh, stings that I've had. But um, these are predators also, and they're very good in the natural environment. The ones we see migrating are males. I got her out of a water valve box. Uh, one of my okay. students said, oh, this house has been abandoned. We checked to see if the water had been shut up, and there's a tarantula living in it. If you, why don't you go get it because somebody might kill her? And so I, she'd set up housekeeping there and it, within a residential area. Uh, we shouldn't kill these. They're not going to hurt us. Um, I don't know if I can show for the camera. Come on, girl. <laughs> see her fangs? I don't know if you can get it real close, but she's got her fangs out, actually. Like she's gonna bite. That's really good. Um, any closer? We'd have to uh, oh, do okay. that ourselves. Okay, wait, 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 let me find the... Okay, there you go. But her fangs are right there by my fingers. And um, they're, they're quite big. <clears throat> Kind of hard to see her. They're big. They're big. And, uh, but they're primitive spiders. And so their fangs, I don't know if you could see them, come down like this, straight out. Whereas a black widow, they go from side to side. And so a black widow can get you much easier than these guys. Famous last words. <laughs> 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 but, um, don't rub your eye. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to rub my eye. i got to stop and get some eye drops on the way home. But. Uh, they're very beneficial. They're predators. They eat crickets and roaches, and um, so so they're they're good in the environment. All spiders are predators. I I suggest that people. These, these two guys are watching. <laughs> yeah, they're going. Don't put her back, please. Oh, there's three or more. And um, but, take it out on them. Yeah. yeah, go after <laughs> them. But they use their venom to subdue uh, subdue. Um, their prey to paralyze them so that they can then, you know, take the juices out. And, 
But even black widows are beneficial. It's just that if you go poking around them or don't know that they're there and you poke accidentally, that you can uh, see how easy it is. Um, they will they'll get you. They're protecting their babies. Now, if you wash your hands, will the, will the hairs come off or no? Yeah, okay. and I'll wash after we get through. Okay, it's not like uh, cacti that you have to pull. The little glo glockets, no. Oh. You don't have to pull it out, okay. fortunately. Okay. But anyway, we do have a few. We have five species of rattlesnakes in uh, Nevada. And uh, they are poisonous, but leave them alone. Be cautious when you're out. Check anything uh, as you pick stuff up. If you're camping, very carefully because you don't know what might be under there. Uh, look under your car uh, to see if anything, including sometimes tortoises go under the car and you don't want to run over those. Mm -hmm. uh, rattlesnakes will hide under there. Uh, if you, you know, just <clears throat> check around. Check uh, your tent uh, before you go in uh, under your sleeping bag. Check your backpack. Don't leave things open where they can get into. That's why you want to zip it up all the time. You're in zip your it up. Yeah. And uh, I have a picture in my presentation uh, of s someone who, who has a uh, backpack with, he found a uh, sidewinder on top of the pot backpack coming Whoa. out. And so you just need to be cautious. Respect them. Um, don't freak out about them. I was up at Red Rock one time and there was a whole group of elementary school kids running down the mountain following their teachers screaming and they thought they had seen a rattlesnake. They probably saw a bull snake. Okay. Uh, but they were sure it was a rattlesnake and um, they, they were screaming. Instead of taking the, the time to, to say, all right, we're going to move away cautiously and, and t a teaching moment, it became a panic moment where they mm -hmm. all ran and got in the bus as if the snake was going to follow them down and take out as many as possible. And the way they were screaming, I wish it had, not really. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it, it was really sad because here were some educators that were acting like non-educators. So you, you didn't get anything out of the, the trip then if you're running away from your... You right. don't get anything. And they go <coughs> home and say, oh, we saw this rattlesnake and it almost got us, but we ran fast enough to get away. Well, the rattlesnake, if it was a rattlesnake, was in the other direction. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's good. Don't, don't play with them. Uh, we were talking before the show, the average person that gets bitten <laughs> uh, in the United States by a rattlesnake is uh, about 24 years old, white, male, and alcohol is involved. <laughs> and, you know, mm -hmm. it's not because they stumbled over it. It's because they were messing around and they weren't yeah. entirely sober. And so, you know, they got what they deserved, maybe. Yeah. Very interesting. So what is the best course of action? I know you just kind of briefly touched on that. So what's the best course of action? You're, 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 do, you're redoing your yard. Maybe I'm just bringing that up because I'm do, working on my yard right now. So you're redoing your yard, um, or you're moving some brush, or, or whatever it is you're doing. Um, obviously, I mean, you want to wear, you know, like shoe, you know, Shoes, should you wear boots, should you wear well, denim, what's the best thing to wear, and then what also is the best thing to do if you see one of these? Okay, if you see a rattlesnake, uh, the best thing to do is always be cautious. Don't put your hands even mm -hmm. in the yard anywhere that you don't know what's there, because it could be a scorpion or mm -hmm. a nest of scorpions. Mm -hmm. uh, be cautious. Uh, if you're moving brush, use a pitchfork or some tool that keeps you away. Okay. If you do see a rattlesnake, don't corner it. Uh, step away and say, boy, this must be a time for a Bud Light or, or a nice sweet iced tea and uh, go in the house and let it leave the yard mm -hmm. and uh, maybe come back and see where it's at and where it's gone. Uh, you may want to call animal control. Okay. Uh, if you're in a neighborhood where, where there's kids and whatnot, you may want to call animal control and see if they'll come and relocate it for you. Don't try. If you're not a uh, a if, you're not snake, trained. You, if you're not a snake handler and you, you haven't worked with venomous reptiles, don't try it yourself. Uh, don't go after it with a shovel. You might, you might get it and kill it, and you may not. You may miss, and you may just wound it. Mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, and and just because it's a rattlesnake doesn't mean it's evil. I I was corresponding with a friend of mine that 
uh, lives in uh, North Carolina, and we were talking about how people just want to kill snakes, and he says, yeah, you can't convince his neighbors to leave the snakes alone. That he doesn't have the field mice problems because he lets, uh, he doesn't kill any of the non-poisonous snakes in his yard. Right. He has a lot of them. And so, uh, but the people there, um, they think they're all evil they're and they scared. want to kill, kill all of them. They're okay, scared. you have to wrap up because okay. we're out of time already. Okay. How, how many, so, do we just have like one minute or? We have two. Oh, okay. Can, can I go real quick? Yes, and then of I'll course. Get, get yours. Okay, coming up in June, we have with tough economy, people are trying to save money, and the extension has always been there for the last hundred years uh, to help people. And we will have a food pres preservation classes uh, that are going to be held how to dehydrate, how to water bath can, can how to pressure cook canning, jams and jellies, and dehydration. Uh, give us a call at 727-5532. Uh, we're looking for people who are interested in being citizen monitors to identify bark beetles moving into the area. We've already had one of these classes in, in uh, town in Las Vegas, but we want to have people out here to identify, be on the front lines. We still have drought tolerant plants from the sale available. Come by and pick up some. And we still have Saturday morning at, was it, Pet Track Park uh, at the parking lot. Um, 8 to 11, selling fresh fruits and vegetables. And we would encourage you to write and call the regents and tell them to give uh, Extension back its budget from the University of Nevada. And they're at Calvada and Dandelion. So and the regents, meaning the, the Board the, of Regents. The Board of Regents. This so is the last line. Uh, they took away our, our, our single line and, and lumped it in with the university so they can do whatever they want to and uh, rather than what the governor wants. Okay. So we'd encourage you to encourage your Board of Regents. So if somebody wanted to find the Nevada Board of Regents, you can just Google go, it. Google it and just go Google online. It, Yahoo and search, all there. Bing, whatever. You'll Remember, find visit it. Debbie over the, the extension and, office at uh, Dandelion and Calvada. Yeah, or call her and she'll tell you where to, and email all of them, not just the one in your area, but all of them. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, I just wanted to say before the graduation this week, uh, congratulate, which camera are we on right here? Uh, <laughs> uh, congratulations to the, to the graduates of Prompt Valley High School and uh, Chad Shropshire, who is uh, Rhonda and Vern's son, and also um, to the graduates of Rosemary Clark Middle School, and which one would include my daughter, uh, Anna Rose Hurst. And um, so just congratulations to everyone. And we hope you have a happy, safe summer, and we'll see you back at your next school year. And hopefully we'll be bringing you some fun stuff that you can do over the summer here in the community. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, please uh, tune in next week. Uh, hopefully Paula Glidden will be here. We'll be talking about the Fall Festival and Fair. And uh, hopefully I'll get Tony for the uh, methodologies from uh, uh, West Care for uh, positive action. So uh, plenty of uh, new subjects and then you'll always be back and yes uh, yes first of the month all right thank you very much for watching thank you, you good night thank night. you thank you